She, did she not release a single single for this album? I'm just surprised there's no streaming numbers next to anything that usually indicates there's no single. All right, hello everyone, my name is Bradley. I have a Brad taste in music, and today it's time to listen to the new Taylor Swift album titled Midnights. I have not actually listened to a full Taylor Swift project since Reputation, meaning that I've missed out on a handful of albums. Let's go over those now. Red, the, re, uh, the reissue. Fearless, I have not listened to Evermore. I have not listened to Folklore and I've not listened to Lover. So yeah, I've kind of missed out on a lot, but I decided to, you know, it's it's better late than never to return to Taylor Swift. So I'm like, all right, let's 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 check out this new album and see how she's transformed since I last saw her, okay? You know, the old Taylor is back at the phone and she's doing the same old shit. So that's probably what we're gonna get. Who knows uh, what, what, what I'll receive listening to this crap. I honestly think she comes back to reputation here. Uh-oh, with that being said, Lavender Haze. Oh, they don't. Oh, the lyrics aren't here. Okay, we gotta pay attention. The Carly album was good. I enjoyed it. Alright, so this is the musical equivalent of exposition starting off the song like this. Maybe not the strongest way to start off an album, but sure, I'll give it a shot. I get why it's called Lavender Haze, okay? Because she's smoking that lean. Lean, 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 lean. They want for me. I just want to say. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm talking, you know, once again, mad shit, but realistically, production here is very bassy, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's like magic. I just think the, the topic of the song is kind of boring. I think that it seems like it's running through the motions of what I'd expect from Taylor. It's just really unoriginal. Yeah, they're bringing up my history. Yeah, oh yeah, but you weren't even listening. So real, I'm damned if I- Oh. This is the highest rated song on the album? No, dude. No, on an album that's a pop album? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, damn. That's what that usually means is that we're going to get an album that's very repetitive and people just seem to get worn down by the end of it. We need a truck that's built tough like you. Ford Thunder comes with a 150 horsepower engine. It's a good car. The Ford Thunder. The fuck is this? Midnight's Target exclusive, Apple Music exclusive, 3AM edition, and the original. Now, I'm trying to find the... This is on Genius. Meaning someone document, documented four different versions of this album. Do you have no shame? Actual Target music? I guess. I don't know. Anyways, the lyrics that popped out to me, what I was looking for is, um... Talk your talk and go viral. I just need this love spiral. Get it off my chest. Get it off my desk. That's... Wow. Uh, uh, girl boss energy. So I feel more positively towards this song than negatively. I think that it has, I mean, for a song called Lavender Haze, a really thick, hazy feeling. Like, it, it almost feels like a, an aesthetic so thick you can cut it with a knife. I appreciate about this song. Because I think that the sound of this song being as uh, top-notch as it is allows me to kind of sit through some really mediocre ideas and some pretty boring lyrics. For me, the song's a shrug. I'm not super in love with it, but I, I will say that there's some good, there's some bad. It's an okay start. It's kind of doing an okay job at setting the mood, so all right. Let's give uh, the next song a shot. It's called Maroon, uh, sh short for Maroon 5, of course. And she will be loved. Alright, I'm fully convinced that this is TikTok music. Yeah, these are all specific vibes and set feelings that are designed to be chopped and cut up and placed into a short little TikTok video uh, while while you're showing off your dogs or your lost mother or something. Or or how you've been together now for two months. So Alright, so it seems like this whole album might be around colors and shit. Yo, there's literally a song called Bejeweled. That explains it, alright? <laughs> Sponsored by Bejeweled. 
But did we lose sight of us again? Sobbing with your head in your hands. Ain't that the way shit always ends? Oh, the hip hop integrations into these songs don't really add a whole lot. Lost you. Like a small boat in the ocean. Sending big waves in emotion. Like how a single word can make a heart open. I might only have one match, but I can make an explosion. Oh yeah, that's right, she is swearing. You know, I guess the fact that I don't really notice is a, is a good thing? I don't know. That's the thing, I feel like Taylor Swift has gone through the industry enough to where I'm just not surprised anymore. These songs have some cool ideas to them, some interesting production choices, and I feel like they're dynamic enough to where by the end of it, it feels like I went through a journey. Uh, they switch up enough, basically. Like, this song has a lot of central ideas, has a lot of like colors as kind of it seems like the consistent like theme of the album so far um honestly it's okay it's a it's kind of a shrug I, I don't hate it yeah it's kind of reverbed it's kind of nondescript at points but i also think that the full picture comes together and it's it's fine next song anti-hero the lyrics I wake up screaming from dreaming One day I'll watch as you're leaving Cause you got tired of my scheming Lyric is she spitting Y'all fucking bars, dude oh, oh, And I'll write your name Sometimes I feel like everybody is a sexy baby And I'm a monster Sometimes I feel like everybody is a sexy baby Whoa, whoa <laughs> Yo, Taylor, chill, <laughs> homie Yo, you gotta chill with that. Hold on, what? Oh, I didn't. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Taylor, what's going on here? The Constitution says you do. Yeah, I don't really know how to recontextualize that line. I just think it's uh, yeah. <laughs> Here's a 180. I actually like this song. Now it has some moments that I don't like, but I think that the moments that work actually outweigh it. I, I actually like the lyrical uh, like depth a lot. I like the aesthetic, and I feel like it actually succeeds at what it's aiming for, despite having a few weird moments. It's a light smiley wolf. I, I, I actually find it really interesting. It's, it's like super open, and it's kind of bitter, and it's sort of self-hating in a way. Um... Yeah, I think it's pretty okay. Now, but I, I need you guys' opinion on something. What do you guys think of this? Uh, having mid and not mid both in the tags of this album. <laughs> Seems to be a, a bit of a war going on. Album of the year moment. <laughs> Next song has Lana Del Rey. It's called Snow on the Beach. Daddy, wake up. It's Christmas. Daddy. One night, a few moons ago, I saw flags of what could have been lights, but it life is emotion. One sec. Dynamic said he sent me a funny meme. If this isn't funny, you're banned. Sometimes I feel like everyone's a sexy little baby. What? And I'm a monster on the hill, tail is old as time. <laughs> Taylor, what the hell are you talking about? And my flight was awful, thanks for asking, I'm glued. Thanks to you, a pocket full, you wanted me tonight, feels impossible. But it's coming down, no sound, it's all around. The like snow on the beach, periphery, my smile is coming down, no sound. So you guys know making it rain, right? Would making it snow be taking the ice cubes out of your drink and throwing them at the strippers? Beach. Make it hail. Make Songs about rare love? Oh. Did Lana Del Rey show up yet? I, I genuinely can't tell. Backing vocals. She does pretty good with the backing vocals, honestly. 
All right, I got another curveball for you. I actually like this song. I think that the aesthetic is really, like, solid, and the explanation of Snow on the Beach being a rare love I think is actually kind of beautiful. It, it all feels like I'm listening to a Hallmark original movie soundtrack, but it's decently well done, and I gotta give it credit for that. I actually like Lana Del Rey's backing vocals, and I think that the overall track is actually super solid. I give it a light smiley ball. It's kind of catchy, too, and uh, it's somewhat memorable. I think it's one of the best of the album. All right. You're on your own, kid. Summer went away. It's okay. We're the best of it. Colin Brad. I hear it in your voice. My I love my mom and Paul. Just one who could make me so I'll run away. From sprinkler splashes, a fireplace, ashes, a call to a taxi to take me there. So baby, hold me closer in the backseat of my rubber. You guys ever, like, I, I know the answer is yes, but I'm, like, looking at this screen and in my peripheral, I see, like, a creepy-ass figure. It looks scary as a motherfucker, right? It's just my jacket, but then, like, there's, like, some other shit, but for some reason in my peripheral, it literally looks like some weird figure in the closet. That's you? I know everyone's saying, like, Taylor, stop being 22, you're 32 or whatever, but I, I genuinely don't think that this is a, an extremely immature direction to go. It's still pop music. It's a lot more low-key. It's a lot less, like, energetic and explosive, which I think would be the, the move if she was trying to pretend like she was, you know, in her early 20s again. Um, I actually, I think that this is somewhat of an understandable direction. You're on your own, kid. I feel like actually is a satisfying sounding track all the way through. It's one of those songs that I kind of spaced out a little bit on, but I still actually liked it. It's kind of a light, smiley ball. In fact, this album already is uh, kind of good. I, I I think the overall aesthetic's actually stellar. I think Lavender Haze was like a little scary because, oh no, you know, it's super, you know, overproduced and shit. I was like, eh. Next song, question. I skipped a song, didn't I? Yeah, Midnight Rain. <laughs> He wanted a comfortable, I wanted the pain Ain't the same, all of me changed like window The cage is full of fences, pageant queens and they pretend that With sunshine, I was in my so this is Taylor saying that she was like the the rain over his parade. And not gonna lie, this uh this is nothing like Reputation at all, not even a little bit. No, the attitude's completely different. The sounds, I mean, sure, a little bit more like electronic, a little bit more modern, but totally different idea. Um, I actually like this song quite a bit. Yeah, I'll be honest with you guys, I kind of prefer this over uh, the folky direction that Taylor was going on previous projects that kind of put me to sleep. Um, I actually think that her uh, style mixed with electronics is actually kind of cool. And I think this is probably the best possible integration of that, at least so far. Um, this song is seems to be overlooked, and I can see how, how people would find the chorus kind of annoying, but I actually think that her uh, the, the way that she goes into it is really uh, smooth and... It actually works very well for me. I actually like it a lot. One of my favorites. Smiley Ball. Really catchy. A good song. Yeah, I expected this album to suck, but I'm actually enjoying this. Next song, question! Good girl, sad boy, big city, wrong choices, but one thing after another fucking situation, circumstances, miscommunications, and I, can I ask you a question? Did you ever have someone kiss you in a crowded room? And every single one of your friends was making fun of you? 15 seconds later they were clapping too Then what did you do? No, I don't think anyone's ever had that situation happen So why why frame it like that? Did you leave a house in the middle of the night? Did you wish you put up more of a fight? Oh, when she said it was too much Do you wish you could still touch her? It's just a question I have more. Ask you a question Did you ever have someone kiss you in a crowded room? And every single one of your friends was making fun of you Chorus is kind of a non-chorus, but I actually think that the beat switch is good to make up for that. that yeah. People compared this album with melodrama. My lord? That's nice, I'm sure. Can I ask you a question? Did you ever have someone kiss you in a crowd? No. When every single one of your friends was making fun of you. Fifteen seconds later they were clapping too. Question grew. Uh, mostly because it actually does matter to the context of this full song, and it has a build-up and a payoff, which I think is actually quite satisfying, though a little bit strange, in fact, very strange. Um, but I actually find the entirety of this song to be a bit intoxicating. It seems like one of those that might grow a little bit over time. I'd give it a shrug, um, but I was ready to call that, like, the worst song of the album, and it actually managed to, uh, to, to win me over with kind of a cool concept. 
So, okay. Next song's the song everyone tells me is shit. It's called Vigilante Shit. No, the cat eyes sharp enough to kill a man. He did some bad things, but I'm the worst of them. Sometimes I wonder which one will be your last lie. You swallow my kids! Lately I've been dressing for revenge. Dressing for revenge. Driving in your bands. Lately she's been dressing for revenge. Yeah, this song is what I wish Reputation was. I actually kind of like this. I'm actually shocked that I haven't really had any major issues with any of the songs on this album. In fact, I'm actually surprised at how well this turned out. It seems very well thought out, like every track has a sort of purpose here. I genuinely think this is actually a pretty good album. Which is funny, this is actually the lowest rated Taylor Swift album literally ever. Outside of, like, Reputation in her very first album. But I actually like it. It seems like a mature direction to go, and it seems like a really, like, like it's solid. The aesthetic is, is extremely solid. My sister kind of gave me a little context to this album because she's a huge Swifty, but apparently each song is about important moments in her life that left her sleepless and staying up till midnight. Okay. Can find the ladies and be in love. <laughs> she's an industry oh, plant. She was doing lines. You should see me in a crown. That's something that ever... Oh, what the? Told his white collar cry, dressing for revenge. Yeah, here's something you guys uh, probably didn't expect. That song was great. It's the Smiley Bull. I like it. I feel like if you're gonna make a song that's bitter and toxic and full of bass, sure, it seems very similar to Billie Eilish, but I don't think it's a direct copy. I actually think it's pretty well executed. I like it. I, I see a lot of people hating, like straight up hating this song. Eh, it's not that bad. I, I, I understand what it's doing for the concept of this album. I understand what role it's playing, and it's really not that outside of the uh, the wheelhouse of everything. It's just different, but it still makes sense. I, I like it. Uh, next song, Bejeweled. Baby love, I think I've been a little too kind. Didn't notice you walking all over my peace of mind. Best believe I'm still bejeweled when I walk in the room. Remember, familiarity breeds contempt. So Combo. Yeah, I actually agree with Blake Gushy for once. I actually think this album's quite fun. Even this song that I feel very puzzled about. There's things about this that I think are just, like, co incoherent. But I just still feel fascinated by the track. And it's and as long as it has me still on my toes, right, then I'm still, like, paying attention. I would consider this to be an engaging song. When I walk in the room, I no mature isn't a euphemism for boring. It's lyricism and uh, the fact that it doesn't have strange and unfitting moments. Maturity is consistency. It's like the new Arctic Monkeys album. That that album was very consistent. All right. It was very, 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 very consistent. <laughs> Shrug. Got a long list of uh, ex-lovers and tell me I'm the same. I wish it didn't remind me so much of uh, Blank Space. It's about my biggest criticism. I listen to the song a lot already and I'm loving the neo-noir uh, aesthetic. I think it fits the themes presented by Taylor. I agree. Next song, Labyrinth. All these lyrics are bordering cringe. You know what? I will take bordering cringe over being like extremely off the deep end cringe that can be like an uncomfortable like an uncomfortable feeling that you have to get over and can make the the listen more challenging and i feel like that's what i'm getting out of this and it's one of the reasons i'm enjoying this album see that's the thing though 1975 is way too off the deep end of the cringe to where it's literally impossible to take it seriously Wow, I feel kind of conflicted because the entire time I was calling that song boring, but by the end of it, I was like, you know what? I actually feel like I got rewarded for my patience through this really sweet and solid, like, drop. I actually thought that was, yeah, fuck you. I know, I kind of like that. It's a light, light smiley ball to a strong truck. I, I gotta say, it actually kind of really came together by the end. I can't hate. I can't. I'm sorry. I think it's fine. All right, next song, Karma. 
Yo, I love OK Computer. It's like and shit for the hell of it. Oh, he said pennies, not panties. I, I gotta say, I like the energy of that one, but it's not one of my favorites. It's a shrug. Like, I like that it's playful, but I think this one goes a little too quirky for me. To where it starts to get a little embarrassing. Um, but I still don't think it's terrible. It's not like an album ruiner. I'm just, I, I'm just not super as, like, in love with that one. Yeah, production was stellar on that track. I just thought it was a little, ugh. Next song, Sweet Nothing. Hey! Okay. Okay. DJ Kelly. with my little tired eye. I found myself around the sweet nothing. I took a push and shove them. You're in the kitchen home. All that you ever wanted from me was sweet nothing. Just something. I found myself around the sweet nothing. Sweet Nothing is another sweet track. It's a shrug. It's fucking slow. Let's be honest here, okay? Unless this final song is the best song on the album and that previous song ties into it, I would probably stop listening after Karma. Or even after Labyrinth. At this point, if this album isn't completely winning me over, then it's a... <laughs> Next song, Mastermind. Yeah, I'll listen to Megan Trainor's album. <laughs> What if I told you none of it the same for the tale? Who can relate? Just listen to the three M tracks. How about instead of doing that, let's listen to this. Megan Trainer taking it back. Oh yeah! Megan Trainer's taking it back, baby! Let's go! Oh, oh. Yeah, that was an extremely underwhelming closer. It's a shrug. I get what it's going for, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I got that short ass attention span. And even if this had some interesting ideas on it, I mean, it's like 40 minutes into this album. I I, I just feel like it's a drag getting to this track and I, I wouldn't give it the time of day, so eh. All right, I already know what I'm gonna give this out. It's like a uh, decent six to a potentially a six plus. I honestly liked it. I kind of liked it. I kind of liked it, not going to lie. thought it was okay. Um, it had more highlights than uh, low points for me. It was pretty consistent all the way through. It sort of locks onto an aesthetic and does okay with it, but then, eh, and then I just kind of like, eh. Uh, with that being said, that's all for me, you guys. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace out. Today? No, not today. <laughs> Bye.